In August of 2019, Major League Soccer announced what soccer fans in St. Louis had been campaigning for for years. It's hard to imagine that we were able to have a thriving professional soccer league and that it could exist in the United States and Canada without having the city of St. Louis being a part of it. Well, imagine no more because St. Louis, which it, with its incredibly rich soccer history, not only deserves an MLS team, but has earned one. This was validating news for our region, especially after Stan Kroenke took off with the Rams and cursed our city as not being able to support three major league teams. Let's go! Let's go! City! St. Louis soccer fans proved Kroenke wrong. Season tickets for the 28th MLS expansion team, St. Louis City SC, sold out immediately. And in November, when the brand new state-of-the-art City Park Stadium hosted a preseason friendly between the City 2 team and European powerhouse Bayer Leverkusen, the 22,500-seat stadium was at maximum capacity. It is a cold 30 degrees tonight, but it hasn't stopped the crowds and it hasn't stopped their enthusiasm. St. Louis, we love it. Soccer's here. Yes. This would not have happened if it wasn't for all the support we got from the people of the region, truthfully. Carolyn Kendall is the president and CEO of St. Louis City, a team her family, the Taylors of Enterprise Rent-A-Car, are the majority owners. I guess it's not really surprising because I know the history of soccer in St. Louis, but the immediate fan response is a little bonkers. Like, it was an automatic buy-in, there was automatic loyalty, there was automatic whatever's coming out with the logo on it, people are buying it, people are wearing it. Were you pleasantly surprised or did you absolutely know that all of that was coming? Oh, I was blown away. <clears throat> I knew we were gonna get support. I did not expect it at the level that we got it. St. Louis has long been associated with soccer. Back in 1950, six of the starters on the U.S. World Cup team were from the East Coast. The other five were from St. Louis, four of them from the Italian neighborhood known as The Hill. The president of the U.S. Soccer Federation at the time, Walter Giesler, was also from St. Louis and viewed his hometown as a hotbed for soccer talent. In 2010, 9PBS produced a documentary recounting St. Louis soccer history. In 1959, the National Collegiate Athletic Association first offered colleges the opportunity to compete for a national title. For the past 80 years, college soccer had been dominated by teams from the Northeast, Penn, Harvard, Princeton, and Penn State. But the first NCAA championship was won by a Midwestern school. The NCAA championship playoffs at the University of Connecticut on a wet Thanksgiving weekend. Sloshing toward the title, the Billikens of St. Louis University as they played the University of Bridgeport. This was the first full season for varsity soccer at St. Louis. And when they finally splashed that sodden ball into the goal, they had placed an unusual story in the annals of sports. College soccer had joined the big leagues. And this first championship in 1959 marked a historic turning point, showing colleges throughout America that soccer had been taken to a new level. St. Louis, they set the bar and it was so much higher than the rest of us. Since that college championship, St. Louis has had multiple professional soccer teams, but the game's national popularity fluctuates, competing with other major league sports like the NFL and NBA. Major League Soccer has spent the last few decades working to gain national loyalty by increasing the number of teams adding star power and the construction of brand new dedicated stadiums and practice amenities. St. Louis already had a soccer fan base and now along with its very own team has a brand new state-of-the-art stadium and training facility in the heart of the city. Let's talk, talk about the intentionality of everything from the location, the name, it's all city. So we've got the practice fields, we've got the stadium, all in the city. 
cities in the name? Well, so we actually asked for people to submit names. So we had over 5,000 people, um, and city or some form of city was clearly the number one choice. But then we started to see how city really kind of fits into the, the entire region. This isn't the first time the Taylor family has backed or initiated transformative projects in the region. City Arch River, Forest Park, Great Rivers Greenway, just to name a few. They view an MLS team as a way to put St. Louis on the international map where it belongs. How did the family come up with this? Just sitting around the table one day and like, hey, let's go do this. No, but it's a great story to tell. So, you know, my family obviously is very passionate about St. Louis and the region. And we were sort of looking for what's our next big project. So it was really 2018 in the summer that um, my uncle came to my mom and I and said, I have this crazy idea. What do you think about going after a professional soccer team? And not knowing what I was saying at the time, I'm like, I think that's a great idea. And he's like, perfect, meet me downstairs in a half an hour. And I think what we found as we started to do our homework was, first of all, it has a huge international draw. So we thought it was a great way to bring, you know, some of these amazing micro communities together to celebrate, you know, a team in their backyard. But also, it's a great way to recruit people to the St. Louis area. And so we were just so excited when we found out more and more about the sport. This is a business. Um, so much private funding was put into creating this, which is also rare. Um, how, how is this a profitable business? But this has never been about profit. It's been about elevating St. Louis back to where it needs to be. With all the geospatial activity, you know, the agriculture activity, we really wanted to find a way to make sure that people not only stayed here, but we were also recruiting, whether it's businesses and families and students. And so we just, again, go back to, we thought that this international sport would be one of the many things that the region has to offer to be something that is attractive to, like I said, families, businesses, so on and so forth. The stadium seats just under 23,000 fans. Every seat will be within 120 feet of the pitch. The pitch sits 40 feet below street level to intentionally create a loud fan experience. City Park will host about 20 regular season MLS games each year. And the first official home game for St. Louis City SC will be March 4th, 2023. For Living St. Louis, I'm Anne-Marie Berger.